Hey, it's Bill Van Lu. I wanted to give you a quick update about what's been going on in my workshop over the last little while. It's been a few weeks since I posted a video. It's been a really crazy busy couple of weeks for me, and it's also been incredibly cold here in Michigan. Two weeks ago, my school that I teach for had our midwinter break, and it was well below zero most of those days. So I decided to spend that time working on getting my 3D printing experience and skills uh, to a higher level and also doing some work on the 3D printer that my son and I put together recently. So check out some of the upgrades that we did and I'll have some more information about a couple upcoming builds at the end of this video as well. Thanks. <laughs> Because I had access to my school lab's 3D printers over that break, the first upgrade we decided to do was to 3D print a fan shroud for the PrinterBot Simple Makers Edition. Printing the fan shroud was pretty easy, and getting the fan off of the printer to install it was also pretty straightforward. But getting the fan shroud itself installed was kind of a pain. Those parts are really small, and there are some captive nuts that sit down inside um, the extruder head, and getting the fan shroud on and getting those captive nuts in place and getting it all screwed back together was really kind of uh, tricky. I ended up taking quite a bit of time and ended up not recording the whole thing because it was just uh, a lot of putting things in place and then hoping they would all kind of line up and getting them screwed down tight. So after that was actually done, then the fan shroud was there and in place. Okay, upgrade number one is in place. Here's our new fan shroud. 3D printed fan shroud. Now in place. Once the fan shroud was in place, it was time to move on and start printing the parts for the next upgrade. Because of its wood construction and the way that the linear bearings are zip-tied onto the arm uh, for the Y-axis of the PrinterBot Simple Makers Edition, it has a tendency to sag when it's at the far end of its travel. So in other words, when the print head is as far out as it can go on the Y end, because there's a lot of weight on that end with the extruder head, there's not a lot of support and it tends to sag down, which can lead to some unevenness in prints. So I went on Thingiverse and found a design that somebody had created. And um, basically it's a set of parts that you print and you install so that those linear bearings have a really secure place to mount to. So here's one of those brackets. And as you look at it, you can see just a slight angle. And it actually, there's a slight degree and a half angle that counteracts the sag tendency of the y-axis arm. If you can't quite understand what I mean here, it might be easier to see as it's being installed. You can see that it actually angles the linear rod uh, for the y-axis up just a little bit. I'll put a link to the Thingiverse thing in the description here. Now once I'd installed those parts, I discovered another problem. The belt drive for the Y-axis kept slipping off of the bearings. And it took me a little while to diagnose why this was, but I realized that adding those parts slid the Y-axis arm away from the main body of the printer a little bit. So I realized that an easy fix would be to simply take the bearings off, put a couple extra washers on there, and then replace them so that the washers would now sit a little bit further out from the body, and that would keep the, um, that would keep the drive belt and the drive gear that's on the stepper motor and the bearings all coplanar. They're all lined up, in other words. So what I've got here is three washers stacked on that bearing, and now I'm just going to install it back into the printer. And I did that for both bearings. Instead of having um, just one washer in between the bearing and the body of the printer, I switched it so there were actually a little stack of three washers there. And pretty quickly, once I got the belt back in place, it was fairly easy to tell that that was pretty good. Now, the other thing that I did that I didn't shoot video of was I took a little tiny Allen wrench and I unscrewed the gear um, from that stepper motor so that it could slide in and out freely. And you can see me sliding it out here to get the belt back in place. So I installed the first bearing and pulled the belt back across. And then I installed the second bearing, same as the first one.
Once I had both bearings in place, I could go ahead and try it out and you can see that the gear is not firmly attached there. So I'm sliding it back in so that it's coplanar with both of those bearings. And then I just went back and tightened down the Allen bolts, or, um, or the set screws rather, that hold that gear onto the stepper motor. And I may want to go back with a little bit of Loctite like I did when we originally put the gear onto that stepper motor. But for now I just tightened it down to make sure that it would all um, work properly. Um, I was just kind of eyeballing it as far as making sure that things were lined up. So I just tightened that down, tightened down both of those set screws. And once both of those set screws were tightened down, I could use my hand to just slide the Y arm back and forth and make sure that it looked like the belt would stay on okay. And it looks like that fixed the problem of that belt sliding around. The other nice thing, as you can see from this test, is that it seems like those brackets really did a nice job of correcting the Y axis sag. So I fired the printer up and started it out and everything looked like it was working just fine. So I was really happy with that upgrade. I still have some more work to do in terms of tuning the printer, but that seems like that's going to make things much nicer for printing, in terms of repeatability and consistency across the print bed, with making sure that it stays flat and even. One last upgrade that I did was to install OctaPrint on a Raspberry Pi. OctaPrint is a software package that allows you to hook a little Raspberry Pi computer up to your 3D printer and use that as the method for controlling the 3D printer. What that means for me is instead of tying up my big expensive laptop with just controlling the 3D printer, I could use a $40 Raspberry Pi, use a web interface through OctaPrint and just upload files to be printed there and let the Raspberry Pi do the work of controlling the printer. Now I've got some work to do in terms of continuing to get OctaPrint set up correctly, but I've made some initial um, runs using it with the PrinterBot Simple Metal and I'm really pleased at how well it's working so far. Now I will have two more build videos coming up soon. One from a project that is almost completely 3D printed and then another build video that I've been working on for a while and just have some final details left to go on. One final thing, make sure that you follow me on Instagram at Bill Van Lu, as well as subscribe to me here on YouTube. Thanks a lot.